keeping us being in a fellowship with us lord thank you lord for this day and we are going to uh, listen the lessons and be with us and uh, let them let us understand everything what ma'am says and let us store all of those things in our hearts lord in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you thank you for uh, praying and uh, once again uh, good morning and warm welcome to everyone i hope your assign your assessments went on well um, and uh, shortly you will get the you know the marks as well so the second assessment is of a greater weightage towards the end of the year uh, so you can pay attention no matter how your first assessment went the second one is of more weightage so concentrate study you know i'm sure you'll be able to score really well in the upcoming one as well okay so uh, yes end of the semester yeah yeah end of the semester okay so uh, let's continue with our chapters here so far we have learned about uh, prayer we've learned about personal prayer uh, we have learned about developing a discipline of prayer a pattern of prayer and all of those things but now we are moving into praying at a deeper level okay and what that means and what we have in scripture that talks about praying with intensity praying um with you know persistence and praying at a spiritual level which is definitely deeper so there is something known as travail or travailing in prayer the bible talks about travailing in prayer now what is travail you know for us to understand usually when there is a, a, a you know child birth a woman is just about to give birth to a child we all know that you know there is is a cry that these women let out because of this entire process of uh, delivering the child okay so that cry is known as travail so we can understand just by the fact that travail is associated with childbirth that our plea to god when we say travailing in prayer it is desperate it is intense okay it is also something that you can um, you can associate with the result you know around the corner because a woman would travail before the child is born so in the same way when we are in prayer sometimes what happens we have our general kind of prayer you know we go before god we petition we ask we um declare we do so many things but you come to a place in prayer where it's beyond that okay and when does travail happen it can happen regarding you know very many things it can happen regarding our own personal prayer requests or it can happen with regard to um you know the burden that we have for uh, the nations and people to be saved so generally like when you uh, study about some of the people who were engaged in revivals you would see that some of them have this experience of travailing in prayer so it went beyond asking receiving petitioning and all those things it went to a deeper level where there is an intensity and a, you know a depth in the prayer so that is what we call as travail okay and whenever you think of travail you think about a woman who is going you know who is going to deliver a child okay so that is travail now why why is you know there why is there this form of prayer we don't know but it's just revealing to us that you know when when we are engaging with god to see the fulfillment of his promises for us or the you know the world around us we we can co labor in such a way as if you know it is on god's heart 
he puts it on our heart in a very strong way okay he puts it on our heart in a very strong way so a good example is uh, you know of uh, this person called as father nash father nash who was um, helpful in the ministry of uh, charles finney many of you would have heard about charles finney a very famous uh, you know a person whom god used to bring revival and in the ministry of charles finney it is said that he would go and preach and people would come to the altar by the hundreds and thousands and repent you know in no time like that so they would just repent and many many people would give their lives to christ so this phenomenon which was going on in his ministry was amazing because you know sometimes preachers preach but you actually don't see this kind of a response and finney was seeing this quite regularly in all his meetings so one of the secrets behind this kind of meeting was a person known as father nash okay father nash so father nash was uh, you could say a kind of an associate he decided that he is going to partner with finney's ministries only in prayer so finney would do the preaching and father nash would do the praying so the kind of prayer people say father nash did was this travail in prayer so what he used to do is he would go to the places you know where uh, the ministry was planned the meetings were planned he would go there a few months before or a few weeks before with two to three people and uh, they would rent a house there they'll start praying so they used to pray 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 to such an extent that it seems you know people say that uh, they wouldn't eat they wouldn't drink water uh, they would even be in such an intense level of prayer that you can only hear groans and cries you know something like travail coming from the uh, from that place and you know when you study about the life of uh, charles finney and the ministry of uh, father nash you read that as long as father nash was alive and he was praying like this the ministry of finney was very successful he had a lot of results but father nash died early once he died and he was buried finney continued his ministry and he realized that you know the way he used to have people coming to the altar that was not happening anymore he tried a lot to continue preaching the way he did earlier but the results were nowhere close to what it was when nash was alive and you know praying for finney so then finney understood what is the difference now in my ministry i don't have the kind of prayer backup you know which nash and his team were providing okay so uh, one of the examples you know of of people who travailed in prayer for souls to come into the kingdom would be father nash i'm sure there are many other examples that we can talk about but i just wanted to share this for us to understand that you know we can have the burden of what god puts on our hearts to this extent that we even travail in prayer okay and before we go any further into this particular subject i want to tell us that travailing is not something which we can manufacture for example i said that a uh, travail happens before you know we are ready to see the promise birthed isn't it so does it mean that if i travail i will see the answer soon we cannot make travail happen it's something that has to come from within you know it comes through that spiritual connect with god so we cannot create it or make it happen you understand what i'm saying though it's a great thing it's a wonderful thing to pray at you know this deeper level and this deeper intensity you and i cannot make it happen we have to faithfully engage in prayer and as we engage in prayer we might experience you know this travail at some point okay and 
when is it going to happen how is it going to happen we can't make it happen right so we just engage with god and we would see that there is this kind of travail that comes forth so scriptures tell us even before you know jesus called lazarus out of the tomb you know we always say right that uh, jesus went he commanded there was a dead man in the tomb he went he said lazarus come forth but just before he said lazarus come forth you know scriptures record that he let out you know a sigh he let out this kind of uh, a travail okay so we know that jesus was engaging deeply with god and this is a kind of prayer which he prayed so what we recognize is jesus didn't just go there and do a surface level prayer it was a deep prayer because he went there um and you know the family was there and scripture tells us jesus wept this is in john chapter 11 if you uh, you can go through verses 33 to 43 okay i'm not going to read through the entire passage now but jesus went there he wept and before he calls lazarus out scripture say that he did let out a sigh okay so this sigh or this kind of you know a, a cry from jesus is comparable to a travail so is it possible that jesus was engaging in a very deep form of prayer before uh, resurrecting a dead man yes it is possible okay so it tells us that jesus knew how to engage at a deeper level of prayer the other place where jesus had or uh, expressed this deep kind of prayer was in the garden of gethsemane okay so even in the garden of gethsemane we know that you know he was preparing to go to the cross uh, and so his heart was very troubled can somebody read john chapter 12 verses 27 to 32 please uh, please read into the mic john 12 verses 27 to 32 Now my soul is troubled and I yearning then a voice came from heaven saying I have both glorified it and will glorify it again therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered others said an angel has spoken to him Jesus answered and said This voice did not come because of me but for your sake. Now this now is the judgment of, of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I if I am lifted up from the earth will draw all peoples to myself. Okay. Thank you. Um thank you. Rin. So as you can see here Jesus is predicting his going away and what is the condition of his heart at that time? He says my soul is troubled. Okay, my soul is troubled, and he is troubled to an extent where, though he knows the will of God, his prayer is something like, "Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour." So, he is under a lot of pressure. Okay, emotional pressure. He he just doesn't know how he is going to go through the. cross and we read in matthew 26 you know under this kind of pressure he goes for prayer he goes for prayer and over there you know he has uh, his disciples with him he prays intensely in the garden of gethsemane okay so how intensely we read that he even was sweating blood so obviously it's a very intense form of prayer that jesus engaged in it was a serious prayer we know that he himself prayed because he was under this kind of tremendous tension uh but he asked his disciples also do you recall he said okay you know watch one hour you pray he comes back and he sees 
what did the disciples do? They were sleeping. So he goes back. You know, he continues to pray. He comes back and he looks at the disciples and he says, what is this? What are you doing? You know, you're sleeping. My hour is coming. Could you not, you know, watch and pray even for one hour? So he himself is engaging at a deep level of prayer. Expects his disciples to engage in prayer, but they are not able to. At this point, they are not able to. So he says, you know, your spirit is willing. Your flesh is weak. Okay, but he continues to engage and we read how, you know, he sweats blood. So what is happening? All that we're talking about, you know, a woman laboring to just deliver, travail. Jesus is travailing, you know, for the manifestation of what needs to happen next, which is him being crucified on the cross. Okay. Uh, so Jesus, of course, engaged in this form of intense prayer. And we know that, you know, uh, definitely, definitely uh, it would have been helped or strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Because remember, we read about the Holy Spirit in uh, Romans 8, 26 to 27, that he himself helps us in our weaknesses. So when we do not know what to pray, he gives us, right? He uh, leads us into the groans and sighs and uh, all of all of those expressions. So uh, the Holy Spirit would have, of course, enabled Jesus in this form of travailing prayer. Okay, and he engaged in it. If you look at some of the other passages that talk about Jesus praying and you know Jesus. Um, uh, seeking God before the cross, like Hebrews says, with vehement cries, you know, he offered up his prayer. So did Jesus cry? Did Jesus, uh, you know, express intensity in prayer? Yes. Yes, he did. And it was with regard to the matter of the cross. Okay. So if he himself experienced this form of prayer, in our own lives, sometimes, I'm not saying every prayer is a travailing prayer. Some prayers can come under this category. Okay, so what could be those prayers that come under the travail category? What do you think? I could, I'm not able to hear you. It changes? Person to person. Person to person. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I, I get that. It is different from person to person, you know, the intensity. But I'm saying in general, what could be those prayers which have this intensity? Okay. Sickness. When you're praying for somebody who's sick, Yes, yeah. When you have more burden, okay. When you have more burden, okay, sure. Burden for what? Okay. Okay, sure. So you have a burden about anything. Maybe God's plan for your life and you really want to see it fulfilled or Somebody said souls. I agree with that. You know, many times God gives us that burden for souls, that burden for, you know, uh, maybe a region. You really want it to be saved. So, yeah, it's possible. You can have a burden, okay, from God. Anything else? Okay, sickness uh, and, uh, you know, close to death. Somebody is close to death, then you are travailing. Okay, that's true. Yes, repentance. Whose repentance? Oh, oh, oneself. Okay, yeah, makes sense. You know, when you when you uh, come to that place where you are uh, travailing for a breakthrough in your own life, you know, you're repenting of 
let's say a habit that has enslaved you or, or something of that kind then yes you are in that place where you're crying out to god you're deeply engaging with god right so travail travail happens um how about praying for family members who don't know jesus or family members who know jesus and who have gone far away you know into their own um thing and their lifestyle so these are all matters where we usually see us engaging in a very deep way in prayer okay uh, and and the surface level of prayer is not going to help it's not going to help we have to come to that place you know where we are before god and enabled by the holy spirit we are praying we are claiming every promise of god's word and you know we we are there travelling but another beauty of travelling as i already told us is generally after travel comes the childbirth so the holy spirit takes us into that place and if we sustain in that phase of travelling the next is the result or the promise itself okay the promise fulfilled but know that this is not something you and i can create as we journey with god in prayer god will strengthen us to go into this place of travel okay but we have to allow him yes anand okay how can you compare to childbirth sure sure so you see um if you if you notice you know the 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 delivery process right the labor the strain the pains yeah the pains that the mother goes through okay so that the expression of that pain is what is travail got it that is why we are comparing it to childbirth okay great now you know uh, paul in his ministry even he talks about travailing he talks about you know travailing unto childbirth okay so galatians chapter 4 and verse 19 um if one of us could please read and please read into the mic Galatians 4 verse 19 I live my little children for whom I labor in birth again un un until Christ is formed in you I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone for I have doubts about you Okay so can you just read the first part of it again uh, Vimal my little children for whom i labor in birth again until christ is formed in you okay very nice so what does paul say there he says i labor in birth right so the terminology he uses is i labor in birth again i labor in birth again so what is he laboring for that last part it says un until christ is formed in you so the fulfillment that he wants to see in the believer is christ being formed in the believer okay so in a simple way for us to understand the result of paul's ministry it is to see christ jesus formed in every believer okay and that should be the result of all of our ministry you know if we are doing ministry what should be the result christ should be formed in the people okay by that we mean the character of christ the faith of christ okay uh, so christ is formed in people and paul is saying i labor in birth or what is he doing 
he is also travailing so did paul pray we know that he prayed a lot do you think he labored in prayer along with his teaching and other forms of ministry so that believers would become more like jesus yes he did okay definitely we can uh, say that he would have travailed in prayer for christ to be formed in the people and in many places we notice that paul you know you have uh, um, uh, people who he says okay like he terms thing he says things like my children or my son he uses terminology like that you have many teachers but you don't have enough fathers so he is using terminology where he is talking about a spiritual birth of um or rather it's it's not really a spiritual birth but it's a spiritual parenting you know that he does and uh, for that he says you know in my ministry i have travailed i labor in birth so it's a very tough kind of ministry till he sees christ formed in the people and even prayer i'm sure he would have been in that place of prayer where he prayed for the believers he prayed much for the believers and even travailed so that he can see the character you know and the faith and the power of jesus manifest in each and every believer okay so uh, this concept of giving birth is nothing new in scripture it's an intense suffering if you want to call it in the inner man okay uh, it's hard to explain actually it's very hard to explain um what what exactly this travail is in a spiritual sense in the natural we said you know a mother travails before she gives birth to her child but in a spiritual sense um it's a suffering or in the inner man and it is comparable to the pangs of childbirth one thing you know that we must recognize is god somehow has called us as human beings to partner with him in prayer partner with him even in an in a very intense way so the way paul said i labor in childbirth and if you look at you know someone like elijah we talked about him isn't it when we said persistence in prayer god already promised but here is a person who is praying seven times do you think that's easy to to have a mindset you're not seeing the result but you continue to trust that god is going to do it it's not easy so uh definitely you know elijah would have gone into prayer with that you know determination and there would have been a, a sense of uh, you know suffering within for him to do whatever it takes to see the results so now we don't know how long elijah prayed we only know yeah, he told his servant to go see you know has the cloud come once twice did he pray for 10 minutes did he pray for 30 minutes or did he pray i don't know how long he prayed those seven times how many hours he prayed we don't know but there was a need for somebody to labor unless somebody labors it's very difficult to see the results okay so can somebody quickly read john chapter 7 and verse 38 okay uh we will read that again with the mic he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water okay thank you so we who believe in jesus out of our hearts will flow rivers of living water in some translations it says belly 
out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water and you know some translations and it's comparable to the womb to the womb as well we know exactly you know if you go um, uh, very technically you might say oh look heart is not belly and belly is not womb but the idea or the picture is from the depths of our being okay from the depths of our being will flow rivers of living water so we have to understand that god can release okay god can give birth to his promises to the work of the spirit through our belly and in the natural we do recognize that you know a woman gives birth through her womb okay so when you compare this with prayer you know when we are praying what are we saying we will see the fulfillment of god's promise when we travel we will see the result or the birthing of the promise of god so in a sense you know what god is doing is out of our belly he is releasing his works and his promises so you know um some people put it this way we are the womb of god when we pray we are the womb of god so how is it that god is going to make things happen in this world through the womb and that womb is nothing but praying believers when we pray and we pray with intensity before god we become the womb of god we are able to give birth now if a woman does not travel what happens generally travel is associated with delivery okay the baby comes out if a woman doesn't do that or she doesn't go into that process of travelling there will never be you know the the delivery of that child in the same way if believers or i'm using the word the church the church doesn't travel imagine we don't pray we don't pray intensely we just go with the flow we're just you know happy by ourselves we will not see the manifestation of the purposes of god through our lives you get it so travel is very important if we have to give birth you know, we are praying for the city we are praying for the nation if the church is not travelling at some point there's no question of seeing the results you know of uh, uh, people coming to the kingdom of god so the point is as believers as the church of jesus christ we need to come to that place of travel if the church is not the womb of god or the prayers of the church are not the womb of god we will not see the release of god's promises okay so travelling is uh, very important we have to help we have to ask god to help us journey into that travel in isaiah 66 verses 7 and 8 uh, again could somebody please read this okay okay so this passage talks about israel and it talks about how israel was formed in a day so if you look at history you will see that the whole political process you know it just took about a day for the nation to actually be formed so it's a prophetic word about literal israel god's people and the term used there is zion you know before she labored she gave birth it is just to give us an understanding that the birth was very quick 
very quickly the nation was born and the term used for god's people is zion zion okay now if you look at passage in um, hebrews 12 we believers are called as the spiritual zion we are the spiritual zion so the way the real zion or uh, israel was able to be formed you know because when she travailed the birth happened in the same way we as god spiritual zion we too must go to that place of travailing only then we will see the spiritual promises of god fulfilled okay do you do you get the comparison yeah so uh, it it's not talking about a literal nation or anything like that it's just talking about the spiritual people of god which is every believer who uh, accepts the lord jesus christ so as god's people you know we go to that place uh, and we travel in prayer now one of the things that we must get very clear in our minds is that travelling even though we are saying a childbirth and you know all the pain and uh, the the agony uh, of the suffering of childbirth it need not look like us shouting and screaming and weeping all the time when we pray sometimes you know we could be praying and i'm sure all of you have had this experience and we are praying very intensely right but we are not expressing it in these forms you know all the wailing and screaming none of that so we cannot judge the intensity of a prayer by the volume or the loudness of that prayer or the expression of that prayer somebody could be praying very uh, very softly or very um, you know quietly only they can hear themselves but they could be travailing so don't judge based on the noise levels or the expressions you know somebody could be crying aloud and shouting and all but it may not be a travail you know in the first place so travail is a spiritual intensity it's an inner man's suffering you could say which you sense only deep inside okay but we have to get to that place it's only when we get to that place that you know we will become the womb of god and give birth to the promises of god and you know god is in the process of creating how many of us know that god is in the process of creating yeah so any questions no questions okay yeah then uh it says uh, that the holy spirit is there like he um he groans and um utter cries that we cannot express so why do we have to 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 live like the holy spirit is already doing it on our behalf oh uh, why why do we we have to groan and sigh and all that and travel 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 like, the, the holy, holy spirit, spirit is already doing it okay so um see then i th it's about co-laboring the holy spirit even when you read that scripture it says he helps us in our weaknesses so he has a part to play he will help us but we have to do our part okay uh, and similarly whenever you read about the um, you know the aid of the holy spirit or the help of the holy spirit you recognize that he will not take over our responsibility of praying so for example again going back to the praying in the spirit uh, you know lesson you read paul says i will pray with my understanding i will pray with the spirit okay so whenever we we say i will will is my capacity to decide 
so i have the opportunity to say i will or i will not so for example if paul said i will not you know pray with my understanding what is he doing his part he shutting the door on the holy spirit holy spirit is helping but he saying i will not pray with my understanding i will not pray with my spirit he has decided paul has decided what can holy spirit do holy spirit will not push he'll say it's okay it's up to you you understand so there is something that god is doing the spirit is doing but we also have to partner we have to um, collaborate so the moment see that is will okay that that is where when you look at the way god has created human beings salvation is not dumped into every human being you have to be saved you have no what are we all doing we are exercising our will we are exercising our choice isn't it in the same way when it comes to prayer prayer in the spirit receiving the help of the holy spirit i will it's a decision if i decide i don't want holy spirit cannot pray all the groaning nothing nothing will come out of me because that is my role i have to do it or in other words i am yielding my faculties what are my faculties you know my my um, vocal system uh, my my body i'm i'm yielding it to the holy spirit and i'm saying okay you release you know you you do what you're doing i will express it so that's how it works so in your question you asked if holy spirit is doing then why should we it's half and half you know if you want to look at it that way he will do but if i don't yield it will never be complete did you get what i'm trying to say so our will is involved our cooperation is involved we have a role we have a responsibility and that's why i've been saying we are the womb of god so if we don't uh begin to pray like that cry out to god like that there will never be a child birth or the birthing of god's promises does god want to do yes he wants to do people are not willing so he can't do it okay so that's the whole point the sovereignty of god he can do everything but he has chosen to work with us if we say no he has to go find somebody who will say yes okay till such time uh you will not you there'll be a hindrance to what god wants to perform okay so anyway think about this um we will just come back after a 10 minute break and pick up from where we have stopped and even if the online students have any questions please feel free to post it thank you